Hey everyone, so I kind of took a little bit of a break from posting super consistently on basically all social platforms. I've just been taking a lot of time with my family. It has been really nice. I'm very grateful that I am in this position that I can do stuff like this. But I'm gonna give a little life update because it's been a while. Um, there's a lot going on and I just wanted to kind of chat and keep you up to date with life, my life. <laughs> But I hope you're all doing well. I hope that life is treating you well. I hope that if you're struggling right now, you find some kind of happiness or peace in something small that could lift you up a little bit. That's basically what I've been focusing on over the past couple of weeks. I mean, it's no surprise I've talked about this in many videos, but uh, this pregnancy has been a lot harder on me, mainly mentally. Physically, yes, it's been tougher. Like I was really sick in my first trimester. My belly is so big in this pregnancy. I carried really high with my son, so I knew I was also going to carry high this time around too, whether it be a boy or a girl. Like I just guess that's the way I carry it's the way my mom carried but my belly is so big I carry in front not really my back which is kind of nice because I don't have as much back pain but my shoulders and my chest and just everything feels so heavy and my hips I literally feel my hips separating growing it's the weirdest feeling I've had Braxton Hicks this pregnancy which well I think there are I never had them with my first pregnancy I just feel like this is completely different and it's very new territory but also going into it having gone through two years of infertility and not knowing if I would ever get pregnant again I feel like I've really tried to hone in on my mental health and make sure that I am okay during this really really temporary and beautiful but also delicate phase of my life I don't know if this is going to be my last pregnancy Dan and I always talked about wanting to for the most part this could very well be my last one which I do love being pregnant I'm not gonna lie like I love being pregnant I just feel like it's weird to think like this could be the last time I'm ever pregnant to feel little kicks inside my belly like I just love this feeling but I have been struggling <laughs> like it's been tough I really feel like I had no worry or anxiety in my first pregnancy at all and this time around just Maybe it's because I'm older and I've grown more and I've learned a lot more, but there's just things I want to do differently and I don't regret anything in my past. Like I wouldn't be where I am now if it wasn't for the growth that I've had, but navigating what I'm comfortable just talking about and sharing and just my life moving forward, kind of like where I see myself in five years, 10 years, all those things. I never really have a set plan, but I do like to have a loose idea of dreams, aspiration, goals, what I want my life to be like when I'm in my 50s and my children are older and I'm sitting around a dinner table, things like that I like to think about just to kind of get an idea. I mean, obviously life is not guaranteed. It's not predictable, but you can somewhat have an idea of what you would love to see. And so I've been really focusing hard on just therapy communicating with Daniel this is the first time ever that we've communicated like so well in a very productive way without like outside of therapy I've talked about it many times how him and I had done couples therapy for five years I don't even know what year we started we basically graduated from it I don't even know the other word to use for that but that's what my therapist called it we basically had nothing really else to talk about and this was at the beginning of 2022. And since then, two years later, we've gone through IVF. We've gone through just a lot of stuff in our personal life that we never really talked about because it was such a sensitive topic. And I knew that when I would eventually want to talk about it, it was going to be something I would want to do with my therapist just because like, I'm very sensitive in certain topics in my life and I get very defensive and it's something that I have been working on for a very long time and I'm so much better, but it's still something I struggle with. I don't think I'll ever be perfect. Nobody's perfect, clearly. But starting therapy again with our couples therapist has been honestly amazing just with us being able to relearn how to communicate properly. Mostly me, I'm gonna be honest here, like Dan is awesome, <laughs> he's so good. He always sees the positive in things. Like he really is always so glass half full, 
laissez faire, like very um, patient. And I'm not, obviously he's not perfect as well, but it's just, I knew that it was gonna be more of a struggle for myself to like get things out properly. And I didn't want to, I just didn't know how to communicate essentially. Even therapy on my own, as great as it is, it's not the same as when you have your partner there with you, especially with someone like our couples therapist that has been with us for five years, seen our growth, knows everything that's going on, gone on in our lives, in our relationship. It's just been really, really nice to restart that. And I feel like I'm in such a better headspace because of it. Don't get me wrong, therapy is very hard at times because, well, at least for myself, I'm tackling things that I don't want to talk about that make me feel uncomfortable, but it always makes me feel so much better. This is not a sponsored video, by the way, guys. I know a lot of my mental health ones tend to be sponsored, but this really is just what's been going on in my life. It has been... I was just telling my friend this the other day, like life changing, restarting therapy, which I didn't think would actually make much of a difference because we know all of the skills. But what's been really nice is that we can communicate properly outside of therapy now. Whereas in the past, it would be like in therapy would be really good because we had someone there and we could learn and then you know, sometimes we would get triggered outside of therapy and then we would wait until the next session to chat about it. But now since it's been two years, we've really had to learn how to do this without our therapist there and it's been amazing. But just going through really the mental toll that infertility took on me, I didn't realize how much it affected me. I felt like I really got my life back in 2023. I said, I'm going to stop focusing so hard on trying to get pregnant. I'm not going to ever stop wanting to be pregnant again, but I'm not going to force it because it can't be forced. And I really let go deep down in my soul. I let go of it. And that doesn't mean I wasn't proactive. Obviously I went and I got the surgery for my uterus. I have videos on that if you're confused, but essentially it is what was causing the infertility. And I fought for my health i guess i could say i'm just really proud of the person that i became in 2023 i feel like i found who i was again with also being a mother with this pregnancy because it's been so hard i didn't lose myself but i just was now dealing finally with all of the emotions and feelings that i had been pushing down that I went through in 2022. So this is a year of growth, I guess, for myself and learning again, life is going to go like this. Something I really prioritize now is my family and just being with my family, trying to stay as present as possible, not feeling like I have to be on my phone, answering emails, hopping on meetings, chatting about things i still have work that i have to do but i make sure that i pick and choose when i'm doing that so i have a very strict nine to five schedule i don't work weekends i am very very strict with this and i feel like it's helped a lot with my mental health um just because for years probably up until two years ago maybe even 2023 i was working whenever I would answer emails at all hours of the day. I would be working on weekends. I set a boundary with myself and with people around me and I'm sticking to it and I feel very free with that decision because if you are an entrepreneur, if you own your own business, if you work for yourself, you know how hard it is to get into this groove of like a nine to five life because so many things are unpredictable. And sometimes you just have to, well, I used to feel like I would just have to get it done right now, even though it's 9 p.m. at night, like, oh, it's gonna take me two seconds. But then that spirals into something else. And I just said, you know what? This can wait until 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. And that's kind of what I do now. And also what's been really nice is knowing that I am gonna take a bit of a mat leave i didn't take one with my last pregnancy one because i just didn't f i didn't know what i was doing honestly first time being a mom i don't know anything when you are an artist like an actor an author whatever it may be or you own your own business it's hard to take a mat leave because it's it's just very complicated it's it's, it's a long process i was talking about this with my cousin who was an actress the other day and she's also a mom and she's like yeah, I didn't really get a mat leave but you know it's also a pandemic at the time so everyone was kind of at home so I was just sharing my life regardless because I had nothing else to do whereas this time I'm going into it like I've been working really hard you know I have multiple forms of income it's not only YouTube that you see that I get paid from I have different forms I have about eight forms of income and I've been working really hard to be able to not only put aside money that we have been over the past 
I don't know how many years into investments and retirement funds and school funds for our, our kids uh, and our future, etc. But it's also so that I could take time off to be with my family and so that my husband can also take time off and be with us and we can just be together and it works out really nicely that we're gonna have a summer baby because it's just the perfect time we know a lot of our family members are teachers we have a lot of friends that are teachers and they get summers off and it's just gonna be really fun to spend a lot of time with our family with the kids and just go into it very much knowing that we could just be with ourselves and not have to focus on work Work so much not that I'm ungrateful for what I do because I love what I do but I've been trying to find a good balance because my mental health has been so rocky in this pregnancy due to the pregnancy not due to my job my job I've been doing this now for so long I kind of know the ropes of things and I've just been proud of kind of how far I've I've gotten it's just wild how different this experience has been this time around I mean for one we're not in a worldwide pandemic that makes a huge difference knowing that I feel comfortable having a newborn baby and having all of my family and friends come and see the baby like right away that makes me so excited I really felt like I missed out on that I know a lot of people like to take time for themselves when they first give birth but I'm especially Dan and I we love to be around the people that we love and I just can't imagine having to do that again like I I did not like that. There are times of it that were nice that it was just the three of us, you know, but like realistically, I am so excited. And I was talking to my sister-in-law because I was saying how it's gonna be so nice to have all of the cousins come and like hold the baby and they're so, many kids it's just it makes me really excited to know that i'm just gonna have this time to really be with my family and my friends and also one of my best friends being pregnant at the same time as me literally we had the same due date for a long time and now i think we're two days apart just based off of like our anatomy scan essentially our babies are going to be born so close together and just knowing that we can go on stroller walks and she's going to be on mat leave i don't know i am so thankful that i got pregnant when i got pregnant i really feel like as hard as it was to go through it, I really feel like this was the way it was meant to be. I also had to reevaluate my life because I went through that and figure out who I was. I, I didn't just go from one baby to the next and continuously get lost in that motherhood, like who am I, what do I like, my life is only my child. I really was forced to figure it out and I did and I feel so grateful for that time that I had and that struggle that I went through because it makes this all so much more beautiful and worth it. I just want to say thank you guys for being so supportive over everything. I know I really shared a lot like my whole social media journey has been very much like an open book open oversharing that's just always the way i've been even in my personal life i feel like a lot of my family is this way as well as are a lot of my friends it's just the way our dynamic is and the way that i went about social media and now just growing and learning i pick and choose what to share what not to share what to talk about what not to talk about and i feel like I'm in a really good place now where I feel comfortable with what I'm doing and I've just been taking time with when I do get news, I hone in on it. You know, like we, when we found out we were pregnant, we waited a very long time before we announced it. Same thing with the sex of the baby, we waited a very long time. I didn't film people's reactions to me telling them I was pregnant. There's just a lot of things I did differently. And although I still do film, a lot because it's just in my nature to document things because I love to take photos I like to take videos most of them being on my phone I just don't post it I keep it for memories you know my dad growing up was always filming he always had the big big camera you know those big ones from the 90s and one of my favorite things to do is to go back and watch all those home videos we have so much of my childhood from me being a newborn baby all the way up until probably 13 14 it's when I got my first digital camera and I started filming. We have it all documented and my sister and I would get together with my family and just watch old home videos and it's one of the greatest things that I love to do so I, I'm very happy that I'm doing the same thing and gonna have that for my kids. Um, it's just a matter of like not just not uploading it. So I, I feel like I'm in a good groove now of what my life is, where my life is going, what I'm comfortable sharing, my interests as a human being, not just as a mother, but because I am so pregnant, my life is just very much around 
pregnancy <laughs> and I know not everyone is super interested in that so at the end of the day it's a phase of my life but I'm very grateful to be where I am like this is everything I've ever dreamed of I just I wake up every morning and I'm like is this real is this actually real and then I check and I, I feel her kicking and I'm like oh, it's real and I just feel so blessed so it's kind of where I've been the struggle bus of like mentally just feeling a lot of emotions because I'm so much more emotional this pregnancy like whoo <laughs> I am very sensitive this pregnancy someone will say one thing and I'll want to cry I don't know what it is I'll watch one sad TikTok and it'll haunt me for the entire day I'm naturally a more sensitive person just in general but like this is to an, a whole other extreme and I know it's the hormones I know it's normal the anxiety that I had at the beginning you know it comes and goes I don't really deal with it much anymore now I feel a lot more confident in my body and just the way my pregnancy has progressed Obviously nothing is guaranteed, but I just feel a lot more um, at peace with it than I did in the first 12 to 13 weeks. I'm also so out of breath and I was working out so intensely up until the point that I found out I was pregnant. I had completely switched my lifestyle in May of 2023, mainly for cholesterol purposes. Like I was, I had a plan with my doctor and my nutritionist to get it to a proper level by August. That was our goal, it was like three months, a three month plan. And it actually was very much attainable for me, but it completely changed my life in the way that I felt, the way that I slept, the way that I could move around. And I don't know, I just felt a lot better. And because I was fitting into all of my older clothes, I got a sense of my style back because I was able to mix and match pieces without having to go shopping because I just had things pulled them out of storage and I was like oh yeah I forgot about this how could I style this in 2023 versus 2016 you know and I had a lot of fun being creative and then when I found out I was pregnant and then all the spotting started whatever long story short I just have not been exercising the way that I was but at the same time it hasn't really affected me because I go on walks all the time I'm very active in a different way like I'm obviously chasing a toddler I'm just listening to my body I'll do some sort of Pilates in my garage here and there some strength training very minimal things that I'm comfortable with doing you know I just want to make sure my blood pressure is always good I passed my glucose test I just my health is always the number one priority that is the first and foremost and obviously I want baby girl to be healthy I feel like if I'm healthy as healthy as I can be then she's also gonna be healthy and that's kind of just what helps my mind keep my mind at peace and I also give myself a lot of grace if I don't feel like walking but today is pouring rain we had a huge snowstorm yesterday even though it's April it's gonna melt all by the weekend but I'm not gonna go for a walk today because I don't feel like walking in the rain and I did not have a good night's sleep last night because I was so uncomfortable I could not get comfy and got up to pee 20 million times <laughs> so today's just not a day that I'm going to go for a walk but I might if I feel like it if I feel like it, I might exercise in the garage, depending. But I never let myself feel guilty about it, ever. Because I know that it's a temporary phase in my life. I went through a postpartum already. I know things come and go. I have so much more confidence in myself and being a mother. And that is one thing I'm very excited for, is that the first time around, I knew nothing. I didn't know what I was doing. I searched up a million courses. I felt like I was so strict with schedules and feedings and sleep because I was like, it's the only thing that brought me sanity. And I didn't know what I was doing, what to expect. I didn't know what was normal. Now, first of all, I have a toddler. So this baby's going to have to be a bit more flexible because we got activities and things to do. Second, uh, no pandemic, so not in quarantine at home for the first year of this baby's life. <laughs> Knowing I can ask for help and feeling okay with that just makes me very excited because I'm so happy that I had Dan with me through that experience last time because he is so confident in everything he does and literally is just the best dad ever. Like, he's so good. I, I always say, like, I wish he could just open some kind of daycare because... I watch what he does with our son, the patience he has, the understanding, the skills he has just with, with teaching in general. He would be an amazing teacher. But you know, he has interests elsewhere. He wants to do other things and he is doing other things. So I'm kind of letting him just do what makes him happy, obviously. But it's like, oh my gosh, I wish I had your brain because I lose my patience a lot quicker. I've been really focusing on that, but you know, to, to get better at that. But 
he's just naturally so good and quick, quick thinking. Like anytime there's an issue, it's like, okay, let's figure it out. And then he finds a solution and it all works out in the end. And I'm like, how do you just do that? How do you not let things bother you? How do you let things go? I swear he's just a very rare form of human being and I feel very blessed to have him in my life because someone like me who does struggle with a lot of these things that I'm very actively working on and know that I'm gonna make a, a huge like over time it's only gonna get better but he's already so incredible and just makes me feel a lot more confident in myself but it's gonna be cool to actually have that confidence going into it this time and not have to fully be like oh my gosh Dan what do I do or what do we do I'm so stressed and that's not to say that things are gonna pop up the second time because they very well could different things you know Every baby's so different. Every pregnancy clearly is so different. The dynamic between my kids, I don't know what that's gonna be like. That's gonna be new to me. Our son starting school is good. You know, there's just a lot of things that are just gonna be new, but knowing that things pass and what's normal, especially with a newborn, I'm there's the amount of confidence going into this and knowing I have that time with my family. Oh, it's just gonna be, I'm feeling really good about it, so. Anyways, that is the update. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's extremely rambly. There's not really a point to it. I just wanted to catch you up to speed with what I've been doing lately because I haven't been as active on social media. But yeah, really taking a step back and focusing on nesting, being with family. I am starting the nursery very soon. Jan just needs to finish the drywall, which I think most of it is going up today in the basement. And then we can move all of Arky's toys down into the basement because right now the nursery is his playroom. And when the kids come over, that's where they go. We need that space for him currently, but I would like to get a start on it because it's a project that I'm very excited to share. I think it's gonna be so cute. Yeah, there's. I still have really fun things coming up in the next few months before I go on mat leave. So stay tuned, I love you, and I will see you all in my next video, which is gonna be a vlog. It's gonna be a fun one. Bye.